next up, so Sergey mentioned security. So let's talk about security. One of our upgrade courses was about security. So uh, we will continue with that topic. Next up, we will have a duo. Yes, we will have two of my colleagues talking about some of the new, very impressive security features in 5.0. So let's welcome our senior trainer from Zabbix Riga Latvia, Kaspar Smednis, and our technical support engineer, also from Riga Latvia, Alexander Petrovs Gavrilovs, with Keep All Secrets Encrypted and Secure. Hello. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Kasper. And today we will talk about keeping all your secrets encrypted and secure in Zabbix. And let's start. So first question is why you need to keep Zabbix secure? And the answer is because Zabbix uh, configuration contains credentials which are used to access all your other systems. And also collected data from those systems may contain some very sensitive information and don't forget that Zabbix can also execute remote uh, commands on your production servers. Before we start, let's look a little bit back into history and let's start with Zabbix 2.0, which was a very nice innovative monitoring solution, but not a very secure one. Can you tell a little bit about it? Yes, of course. Well, in Zabbix 2.0, you actually could encrypt only connection to the front end. So basically between the front end and keep your password safe in the database by hashing them in MD5. All other components at that moment were not having encrypted connection. Yes, and then a huge improvement came, Zabbix 3.0, where we introduced encryption between different Zabbix components, between Zabbix server, Zabbix proxy, Zabbix agents, and also command line utilities. And now this system become much more secure. Next, Zabbix 5 introduced a new feature, encryption between Zabbix server and a database. And now we have a Zabbix 5.2. And what you can say about it? Well, in Zabbix 5.2, you can actually keep your secrets safe. So keep your macros absolutely safe by storing them in a HashiCorp vault, making them unreachable for any perpetrators. And additionally, there was another feature added, the granular permissions, but about them, Arthur will tell you more. Uh, yes, and in our presentation, we will try to cover all those topics and uh, talk about them. So let's start with a Zabbix frontend. Today, a lot of people are working from home and accessing uh, Zabbix instances from their home computers, and they may use insecure web connections to access Zabbix. So what are the risks? Well, somebody can actually intercept uh, in the traffic and get all the data that's being transferred between your Zabbix and between the front end. So that's why you can use actually encrypted connection to make sure that data is unreadable, un unreadable for anyone who actually gets that. Yes, and please remember that also all your other security information is under risk. If your connection is not secure, all your other security credentials are also uh, can also be compromised. So how it works? Well, it works quite simply. You have multiple options on how to make connections encrypted. One uh, is to use public keys, and the other is to use uh, asymmetric encryption or public and private keys. So uh, with public key exchange, well, basically you have one key that will be exchanged uh, between anyone who has the access. Here, the issue is that you have only one key. With public and private key, well, you have one key that will actually encrypt the data and another one that you can share with someone who you trust and then he will be able to decrypt the data and understand the information that you are sending. Yes, so basically, basically this is industry standard, HTTPS, where you are using public key to encrypt and only private key can be used to decrypt. So in this scenario, the connection can also be, let's say, intercepted, right? And some person may read your traffic, but actually he will not get any valuable information without having private key. Yes, and all your secrets at this stage are kept secure. Next, let's talk about Zabbix users. 
uh, we have a different type of user types. Can you explain a little bit? Well, as you may know, Zabbix has three types of users. The main of which is, of course, Zabbix Super Admin, which has basically unlimited access to everything. He can change configuration, he can view all the secrets, again, full access. Then we have Zabbix Admin, uh, well, usually more experienced Zabbix users who you allow to change some configuration or, well, view some information about the configuration. And then the Zabbix users who can basically uh, get access to the data, but only view the data. So only monitoring, no configurations. Yes, and on top of that, we can also assign those users to different user groups. We have administrator groups with read-write access. We can have user groups with only read-only access. Also, those access can be extended. We can give some more read-only rights to some admin groups and so on. And then remember that there is one other user type, which is called Zabbix Super Admin, which have unrestricted access to all your hosts. So what can go wrong here? Well, if you give access or somebody gets the access that he shouldn't actually get, he will have access to absolutely everything in your Zabbix. Passwords, secrets, macros values, and of course, the data you collect. Yes, so the main concern here is to protect your super admin user to have a strong password and to have only a limited amount of super admin users. Next, username and password. Of course, very, very simple, but still, please change the default admin password after you install Zabbix for the first time. Yes, otherwise, all other security is just useless. Yes, somebody can just type admin Zabbix and get access. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about password encryption. So, as we told before, encryption is improved in latest Zabbix version. Can you explain a little bit? Well, uh, as I mentioned, in previous versions, you used actually MD5 to encrypt the passwords. Now we use a more secure encryption method, and this is Bcrypt, which uses a unique salt to protect your passwords, and of course is more brute uh, force resistant in case somebody actually tries to pick the password. And a really cool thing to know that if a user changes his password after the upgrade or logins just a general login, his password will be encrypted into Bcrypt automatically and will make it more secure. So if I have old version of Zabbix and if I upgrade to latest 5.2, then all my passwords will be automatically upgraded on first login, yes, right? Yes, that's exactly right. Automatically. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Next, uh, there is also another possibility to use external authentication, to use LDAP or use uh, SAML or HTTP, which means you can keep your usernames and passwords outside of Zabbix. And why this may be useful? Well, occasionally somebody may leave your company and suddenly you may just unfortunately forget to actually remove that user from Zabbix, potentially leaving him with access to all your data. But when you use LDAP or SAML, well, chances are really higher than when he will leave the company. He will be also removed from the access in LDAP or SAML. And that means he won't get any access even without actually removing the user from Zabbix. Yes, and one small note here from my side, if you are using external uh, provider for authentication, please secure the communication between Zabbix and external provider. Otherwise, your passwords also may be intercepted. Absolutely intercepted. correct. Yes. Okay, next Next are internal communications. And let's see how, when, how we can protect them. So let's talk about built-in encryption which can protect different Zabbix components, uh, like connection between Zabbix server and proxies, or agents, or command line utilities, and how it's implemented. So we have two types of encryption, which are the certificates and pre-shared keys. The coolest thing in Zabbix, you can actually specify both for incoming connections, making sure you use one way or another to secure your data exchange. And there is one minor improvement in 5.2. Uh, 
If encryption is used, now the encryption tab is highlighted, which may can make your configuration a little bit more transparent, let's say. Uh, so, next question is, what to choose, certificates or PS keys, which are better? Well, they're both really secure, and especially since Zabbix supports uh, basically two kilobyte keys in uh, certificate exchange or uh, in PS keys, that's really up to you. The main point here is, of course, uh, that potentially uh, certificates can be accounted as more secure since they use a pair of keys. Basically, one to decrypt the information and one that you share, uh, again, with anybody you trust to actually be able to decrypt the information. And in PS key, well, you have only one key that is shared across everyone to actually decrypt the information. So, potentially, again, PS key can be less secure, but that's a really topic for debate. Yes, so one more addition here, certificates can be used also to identify the system. While PS key offers just encryption, certificates also offer identification, which may be useful in some cases. And both of them are using encryption keys, which can be different size. Basically, the larger the encryption key, the stronger the encryption. But the question is which size to choose. Well, again, uh, that depends really uh, in this case on how much resources uh, you have available to actually to spare for encryption. Since the bigger the key, then of course, uh, more time, even, even if you're talking about one data exchange when it's noticeable, the more time it will take. And if we're discussing the size of the key, well, the half kilobyte key can be potentially really secure too while letting you save some resources so make sure to make an adjustment depending on what resources what hardware do you have and how many can you spare to actually process encryption and decryption yes so choose the correct uh, key size if you are really concerned about security then the two kilobyte key currently is considered at least publicly as unbreakable so next, uh, different encryption methods can be used, which means you can choose your preferred method for encryption between different components. Let's say you have a local network, which is some safe zone, and you are trusting your employees, and you may leave all your communications unencrypted. And then you have some Zabbix proxy in a distant country over the public internet link, and then you are using the strongest encryption with certificates. Uh, locally, you can choose using PS key, or maybe if you have VPN connection, which is also secure, right? Uh, you can leave this unencrypted. So this is completely up to you how you will build up this architecture. Uh, one more nice feature is Zabbix starting from version five uh, offers automatic secure auto registration of active agent which means from the very first moment the agent registers, the communication is secure and all the information is exchanged in a secure way. Uh, I have made some example architecture here. You can see I have Zabbix server, proxy, and agent who is auto-registering using a PSK key. So what do you think about it? Well, I would say it looks nice, but something is missing. Uh, as somebody probably already noticed, something in the middle, and that's encrypted connection between Zabbix server and Zabbix proxy. Since, again, uh, in that case, the proxy and the server without encryption will exchange all that data that was collected by the agents uh, and all the keys, of course, too, absolutely in an encrypted way, making them vulnerable. Yes, so make sure to protect all communications be before you proceed with securing agents or other things like that. Also, there is another risk uh, in configuration, potentially. Look here, I have agent which is connecting securely to Zabbix server, so the connection is encrypted and nothing can be intercepted, so I can say this setup is safe or you have other uh, any other ideas? Almost. But what if you actually forgot to really encrypt connection? And in this case, you actually allowed 
unencrypted connections. And that means somebody can just connect to your agent and execute some commands to get to your data or even worse, to some of your passwords kept on the system. Yes, so our recommendation is if you are securing your communications, don't leave such configurations which will allow potentially uh, to connect uh, to your system in an encrypted way. Also, the, next, the new feature in Zabbix 5 was Zabbix DB encryption, which actually gave you a possibility to uh, securely exchange information between Zabbix server and Zabbix frontend and the database in between of them. And not only to, well, basically to secure the data exchange and also verify, for example, that you are connecting to the correct database or you are using or whoever is trying to connect is using the correct certificate authority, making sure that the certificate that he uses was issued by a right system or person. Yes, uh, here you can see three configuration options. So just require the encryption or you can require encryption and verify certificate or you can do a full verification and also uh, verify the database name. So it's up to you which level of security you will choose, but even the first one will offer encryption which will already protect you. All others are just additional levels. Next, let's talk about actually your secrets. Let's talk about how to keep your secrets really secure. And mostly your secrets are kept in user macros. So user macros can contain different information starting from some thresholds and also some passwords or IP addresses or whatever. So here we have a basic example. We have some host, we have some thresholds defined and nothing very important here, right? Looks like it, but hey, we actually have a button. In, uh, take a look at inherited macros. And if you click on it, well, or an user clicks on them, he will actually see all the passwords that you have inside those macros and he will get the access, well, not only to the information, but potentially to some of the systems those passwords are used for. Yes, so the main idea is you may have some global macros and global macros are by default accessible only by super admins. But on any host, if you will click on the inheritance, you will actually see the values of those global macros, which means they are absolutely not secure. So what we can do? One option here is to use a new feature in Zabbix file, which is called secret macros. So what are the secret macros? Well, uh, secret macros basically allow you to hide information from the person who is not allowed to view it. And he will see, of course, not the actual value of, let's say, a password macro, but he will see only dots. So again, as he will go to the inherited macro or host macro, doesn't matter he won't see any passwords and he won't get access to the place he shouldn't be going to. Yes, so the macro is not visible. You will see only dots. It is not uh, visible on test forms. It is not cloned. Uh, by the way, what will happen if I will export the host, by example? <laughs> well, not luckily for you, you will receive a template with empty macro value. Oh no, ah, okay. But, uh, this person may be really unhappy at the moment because he cannot get access to the secret macros from the front end. But let's try another approach. Another approach is that they still have some vulnerabilities. And what are those vulnerabilities? Well, since you mentioned, uh, the macros are, of course, still stored in the database. So potentially somebody can break his way into the database and find them there or even worse, he can steal the whole database. Yes, so remember that you need to protect the DB con uh, connection, you need to protect your database. It's also recommended, if you can, to encrypt the database because the DB backup can be stolen and then only encryption will save you. Yes, but still, 
this is let's say some drawback to secret macros that they are still stored in database can we do better and we can let's show how so we can actually use an external vault that will store all your not just passwords all your secrets separately making sure that if somebody even stalls your database he won't be able to actually get those secrets and you can sleep calmly knowing that wherever your database is your secrets are still with you yes and one more note while the vault is very secure storage don't forget to protect the communication yes yeah, sure okay so what is a vault we are talking about the vault about keeping secrets uh, about keeping your secrets safe but how it works well just as the name says it works like a vault so it's basically a tool helping you to keep your secrets uh, secure and while it will of course uh, provide an interface to show you how uh, and where your secrets are kept it will have a really tight access control uh, making you uh, use keys use unsealed keys as they called in the vault to actually open it there are five keys overall and to make a first unsealing to actually get the token you will need to use at least three and in a more secure way you will have three people each having their own key yes maybe you need it yes so initially when you start a vault service it is sealed so it must be unsealed and once it is unsealed then you can access so zabbix will connect to vault and it will send a secure token to access the vault secrets and the, then vault will send back the macro values any more additions here well probably not mentioning that maybe you uh, have updated some of the secrets in your front end and you want to instantly update the Zabbix. Then you can, for example, reload uh, the secret cache, I would say, to actually update the information and get the new values for them. Yes, the secrets are kept in configuration cache, so you can reload the whole config cache or you can just reload the secrets. But there is one problem. Look here we have an, three configuration options so we can specify the vault token vault url and vault path very very simple like right? but there is one thing i don't like here and this is this one look here so previously you had zabbix server configuration file with a password now you have a zabbix server configuration file with a vault token so actually What's the difference, right? If I have access to config file, I can use a DB password or I can use a vault token. So are there any ways how to do, how to protect it? There's actually are. And to make sure that even if somebody gets, well, to the configuration file, you will still hide uh, the token itself in a vault, uh, sorry, in an environment variable to make sure it's not reachable for whoever is getting access to that file. And what will happen to this environment variable after Zabbix server start? Well, it will be automatically and set as soon as server oh, starts. No. So it will be very hard to get the access token in this case. It's not stored in any text file. It is just set as variable Zabbix server is started. Variable is unset and completely gone. So this is our recommendation currently, how to set up the vault really in a secure way. Uh, let's talk a little bit the vault macros. So we have a three types. We have a simple macros, we have a secret macros, and we have a vault macro. So what's here? Well, uh, when you use basically the vault macro, you will need to provide uh, in Zabbix the reference path to uh, basically show Zabbix where in the vault your secrets are being kept and the path will be specified as a macro well not of course the actual password yes so this means first you create a secret in a vault then you specify the path and there is no way from Zabbix front end how to see actually the contents what's under that path 
that is only known to Zabbix server. One more, maybe small thing, but still are agent key restrictions, which are also introduced in Zabbix 5. And what are they and why we need to restrict agent? Well, for some of us, it's quite obvious. For somebody who's new to Zabbix, of course, we need to tell that. Well, Zabbix can collect sensitive information through agents. What kind of information? Well, information from configuration files from log files or even the password files. Yes, so by example, it can access the Zabbix server com file itself, just like, because it's readable by Zabbix by default. Okay, and there is another improvement in Zabbix 5, which are agent key restrictions. And maybe you can tell me why we need to restrict agent keys. Well, some of the users already know, somebody is probably new to Zabbix, so we should tell them. Well, uh, since Zabbix server and of course Zabbix agents have access to the metrics they collect and potentially they can even have access to configuration files, to the log files, or even worse, to the password files. Yes, then, yeah, then you can create some key which will access this information which is intended to be kept secure. Oh, no. Yes, and there is another problem. Zabbix has remote commands, which are very useful and powerful way of monitoring, which means you can issue any remote command on system to gather like uh, free memory or disk space or whatever. What can go wrong here? Well, absolutely anything I would say, especially since somebody can actually connect to your agent and if it has all remote commands allowed, uh, what can he do? Well, for example, he can execute a command that will download some malicious software on one of your workstations, servers, or any other device that has a Zabbix agent. And, and this is definitely what you don't want to happen. So how we can prevent this? We have uh, agent key restrictions implemented using allow key or deny key syntax, which means you can allow or deny entire commands, or it is possible to use wildcards to specify, let's say, more wide restrictions. So what will happen if the key is restricted? Well, if some not very good person will try to execute a command that is actually restricted, he will see a message like, hey, this key is actually not supported. And he will be just lost, like, what's going on? I know the agent's there. Why cannot I get any information? Uh, agent's broken? Something else? But the main idea here is not what he will see. The main idea is what he will not see. And he will not see any successful remote commands execution or sensitive data being retrieved back. Yes, so this will give no potential clues to attacker what went wrong. Next, uh, key order really matters. So all those allow deny keys are executed in an order from top to the bottom. And on the first match, the rule will be applied. So I have played a little bit with those uh, allow deny rules. And I want to access my log files for my application or database, and I would like to deny the access to any other files. So I have created a rule, but for some reason it's not working. So what's wrong? Hmm, let me take a look at it. Oh, yes, you actually denied all the keys first, and then you tried to allow some. And just as you said, the order matters. So you need to allow what you want to allow first, and then you can deny everything else. Yes, or you will have the result as in my scenario. You are just denying anything and all your allow keys are just ignored. And if you are a real security expert and, one, and if you want to secure Zabbix in the best possible way using the strongest encryption currently known, then you can play with a custom cypher suite. So what are those cypher suits? Well, cypher suits 
is basically a set of algorithms that help you to secure a connection between different components in your system, let's say it like that. Okay, I'm looking here, I can see key exchange, authentication, encryption algorithms. I can see DSA, SHA, and other ones. They all look very cool. So what can go wrong with those? Well, for the person who's seeing those a first time, you need to know that as the time goes, some of them become vulnerable. And in this case, there are already actually some uh, vulnerabilities found in some of them. So make sure you use a combination of those, since you can combine them actually, to not use anything vulnerable in any part of your encryption algorithm. Yes, so the main idea is if the cipher which is used in encryption is vulnerable, then actually all your connection is potentially vulnerable. So here we have a cipher suite, how it looks. So can you explain a little bit what's here? Well, here we can see an actual, I would say, complex uh, of a cipher suite, which basically uses different types of algorithms to make sure your uh, key exchange is encrypted, authentication is encrypted. Well, the encryption uh, that is used for that is something specific. And of course, the hashing to, well, hash all that information. And Zabbix offers custom uh, Cypher suite uh, implementation in all connections between agents, between proxies, between databases. So you can really make your setup most up to date. And if you are security expert and you are reading latest security articles, and if there is some vulnerability, you can immediately react and make your system uh, secure. The question is, which type cyber suite to choose? Well, it's a good question, especially since all of us know that uh, our environments are getting pretty big and we have a lot of devices there. So, of course, in a perfect world, you would use just uh, the most advanced and secure cipher suits, right? Mm -hmm. But we always have some of the devices or even just one device that is quite old and it just does not support anything new, anything more advanced. That's why sometimes you need to use something out of legacy. Uh, that's not a problem since you can use, of course, different combinations of cipher suits between different devices and components. Just make sure you use them appropriately and make sure that you don't use something newer with something older because well, it may just stop working and you won't get any access to the data. Yes, but uh, as I said previously, this is meant for security experts. If you don't know what you are doing, maybe ask some expert help here. And let's conclude. So how to secure Zabbix and how to do it in a proper way? Because as I, uh, as I told before, the order really matters. So what we would secure first? Well, of course, the first thing we would secure is the connection between Zabbix frontend and, well, Zabbix itself to make sure uh, the exchange of configuration and sensitive data will be encrypted. Then we would encrypt connection between Zabbix server and the database. Why? Well, for the same reasons, to make sure that data exchange between Zabbix server and the database and all that it needs to collect the data again, will be secure and unreachable for anyone. Yes, and once your data are secured, you can start securing your connections. So start with the most important connections. First, we recommend securing the connections, which are the, let's say, big connections between Zabbix server and proxies. And once they are secure, then you can start securing all your agents. Otherwise, you may put yourself under some risk. Once it's done, we have another improvement here. You can store your secrets in a really secret way. You can use the vault, install the vault, and store your secrets in a vault. And as a last addition? Well, and the last addition, of course, make sure to restrict the really sensitive keys, like unwanted command execution, or possibility to read the contents of the password file. And then 
well, you will be really safe. Yes, at least I'm looking at this picture and this system. It looks pretty safe to me because all the connections are protected. There are some restrictions, so it will be not a very easy task to break into such system. And if you want to know more, and if you want to become a security expert in Zabbix, we offer a new security training course, which will cover all the topics which were included in today's presentation. We will show you how to secure your connections. We will show you how to use Vault, and we will so show you much more very important things. The next course actually is scheduled, as far as I know, in November. And the first course will be provided by me. So you are welcome. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kaspers. Thank you, Alexanders. As for the questions, Kaspers will be covering questions for both of these people. Um, so let's begin. Uh, we have a couple of questions, actually quite a lot. So first off, since Kaspers is our senior trainer, he's the one that's responsible for writing and creating, developing new trainings. First question is, what are you planning to include in the security training? Uh, well, uh, we will include everything which was presented today, like uh, vo using Vault, like uh, securing connections, like using DB encryption, and maybe even a couple more things, like, by example, using firewalls. So this will be a, a full one-day course, and you will have a lot of practical setups. So basically, uh, the setup which was presented today, we will set up together uh, during the uh, training day. So pretty much everything concerning security will be covered. That's the plan. Uh, next up, so is there anything that you think should be secured in addition to what we currently have? So this setup is already pretty secure, but uh, maybe one thing which is currently not possible to encrypt uh, using Zabbix built-in tools is connection between Zabbix frontend and Zabbix server. So maybe if your uh, servers are uh, located in different places, you may encrypt the communication between the front-end and server. That can be done additionally. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, regarding the encryption that you covered over here in the presentation, um, you went through a couple of steps on how to enable it. Um, do we have any plans to make such a configuration enabled by default, essentially encryption just, you know, being enabled out of box? Uh, I don't think so, and there is one reason for that. So while it's very important to keep your information protected and secure, I think this will make this setup too complex for beginner. Yes, and we have millions of users using Zabbix, and we don't want to make this system too overcomplicated from the beginning. So I think you will still be able to set up a very basic setup for maybe some home monitoring or, or whatever. And if you are working in enterprise, then of course you have a bigger expertise and you can protect your system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So start simple, out of box, and then continue kind of building on it to make your environment more complex. Yes. Um, and last question. So how does Zabbix or does Zabbix at all deal with expiring tokens? Uh, well, well, well. In this case, uh, you must manage your tokens on 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 the vault side, because Zabbix is just using the token to connect to the vault. So if the token is uh, about to expire, you need to create a new token. Uh, what I think in this scenario is maybe you can monitor the vault token expiration date with Zabbix. So Zabbix will give you some warning: Hey, your token will expire in five days. Please create a new one. Yeah, just like with certificates and pretty much everything yes. else security related. Yeah. Thank you, Kaspers. Um, you've covered most of our questions here. Thank you a lot.